this is the more important news that we got this week from LQWD Technologies, ticker LQWD on the TSX Venture and on their OTC LQWDF. The company on October 29, 2024 reported that they acquired five additional Bitcoin and that overall the company holds 136 Bitcoin representing 13.6 billion Satoshis equating to and this is a, uh, a way that they uh, display the value 139 Satoshis per LQW share they say that the company is debt free and plans to buy additional Bitcoin and add it to its balance sheet just a quick reminder LQWD is a proxy of Bitcoin and also is involved in the Lightning Network. So this company takes the Bitcoin, uses to establish Lightning channels and collects fees from the different transactions that go through their network. Now let's have a look at the chart. So here is LQWD Technologies chart. This is the four hour chart to have a little more data. The chart is still bullish. We continue to go up. We seem to have Establish a new bottom so we can actually draw this small support here. We initially broke this stop at around $1.10 on our way up, then we corrected, corrected as low as $1.15, held the $1.30 level, and we have bounced from it so far. The stock price is at $1.57. Keep in mind that. This stock is a little less liquid than the others, meaning there's a lot less shares being traded. And sometimes the jump in prices are important. You see it here, these big gaps means that the, the price went from 122 to 133 in one shot or something like that. You see gaps here also, all these gaps here. Eventually with more trading volume, the chart will go, will get smoother as much more transactions are processed for this company. This always happens when the company does not trade a lot in the exchanges and the TSX Venture stock market has smaller companies than the TSX, which is the biggest exchange in Canada. So some stocks get listed initially in the TSX Venture and as they grow, sometimes they'll jump to the TSX and once they're in the TSX, they can actually be listed in the US also at the same time. So that's what's usually happening. So in this case, we see these gaps because there's not a lot of buyers and sellers at all the different levels. And sometimes when you buy, especially if you buy at the market, meaning that you're going to buy whatever share is available. Sometimes the price goes from 140 to 143 and then to 145 and then from 150, that can happen. You don't have sellers at all the different levels. So this will change as the market cap of the company goes higher. This is a small market cap company. It's around $25 million, so it's not a huge company. That's why you see it in the chart for those who are curious about, about that. So, so far, we're still in the exponential phase. We corrected once, but bounced harder. Are we going to stay above 150, for example? Will this be another support eventually? We need to see what the market will show us. Over the weekend when I'm doing this video, Bitcoin has corrected quite heavily. It's around 67,600 right now. It was near 7,000, I think, on Friday. So that's $2,500 lower. Will this affect the proxies? On Monday, it's going to depend how it recovers over the weekend. If it, by the end of Sunday, it's near 70,000, the impact should be lower. But if it's still down, then we could see sell-off in these proxies. That can happen, so just be aware of that. But for now, LQWD chart is still bullish. Again, not financial advice, but for those who want to get into the asset, you need to look at what Bitcoin is doing. You also need to look at the different support levels on these stocks and try to buy in multiple batches, not only once, and near support levels. Do not chase these stocks, please.
not financial advice. In my opinion, these companies are undervalued to a certain point. So being patient and selecting support levels is an important part of investing. Let's cover big digital right now. Another proxy of crypto. The ticker is BIGG on the TSX Venture and BBKCF under the OTC market. This company has three subsections, Netcoins, that is a, an exchange, a small exchange, blockchain intelligence group, and then Terra Zero that is involved in uh, Metaverse from what I recall. But the more important thing is that the company has cash and crypto as of June 30th, 2024 of 20 million. They increase this quantity by 65% in a year. The only issue that we have is that we don't know what's involved in that 20.4 million. How many coins do they have? What are the proportions? Do they have Bitcoin or not? My guess is they do. Is this 20.4 million used as liquidity for net coins, the uh, exchange that they have, or it's part of the balance sheet of the company? I don't know. So we'll have to wait for quarterly reports to see if they divulge that information or not, or future press releases if they actually state what they have in the balance sheet let's hope they get we get clarity on that let's go to the chart now so this is the 30 minute chart of big digital assets ticker BIGG the stock is trading at 19 cents we got the big jump in price from 14 cents up to a high of 0.255 cents and then we have corrected so we see the big jump in volume here but now we have dwindled down to previous type of levels. Some people got profits on the way down. And now we seem to have established a support at 18 cents. We'll have to see if that support holds. On the 30 minute, the MA50 is already above the price. So this will come down. But the MA200 here shows support, meaning it's below the price. But both are going up and to the right. On the four hour chart, we see a little bit the same thing. The big base here at 14 cents, the base at 18 cents, the correction that we have seen, drop in uh, volume that's associated with profit taking. So now we should wait for consolidation. And if we see we're going to 19, 19 and a half cents, it means that we're bouncing away from this base. And if so, we're going to have a bullish type of trend like that. And if we do, then we're going higher. If it's associated also with higher volume, not financial advice, will this happen? I guess there's a possibility for it. Big Digital has not clearly indicated what type of coins they have in their balance sheet. Maybe a clarification in future press releases will help. We will see, but for now, we have seen an increase in price, but we also have seen profit taking. And like I told already in this video, wait for regions of support. If you're interested in these companies to add to your position and do that in multiple days, multiple times within a day, if you can, to have a good entry average for these stocks. Not financial advice, but that's the best that I can tell you guys. Also, you need to have conviction on the bull market and that will go higher. If not, it doesn't make any sense to invest in these companies. This is the most recent press release from Soul Strategies. On the 25th of October, they announced that they were going to look into buying more Solana validators. You can review the press release on the website, but this is the one that I wanted to cover in this video. This was on October 29th, 2024. Soul Strategies had a bag of Bitcoin and Solana, and we didn't know if they were going to continue to add to the Bitcoin position or only the Solana position or both. So up to this point, we didn't know, but this is what the company announced 
on the October on October 29th. Today, the company announced that it acquired 12,389 Solana at an average price of $240.12 Canadian, as this is a Canadian company. Oh yes, by the way, the ticker is HODL, H-O-D-L, but you have to make sure that it's in the Canadian market. HODL in the US market is Vanex ETF, so it's a different thing. And then on the OTC market, the ticker is CYFRF. The company also was formerly known as Cypherpunk Holding. So they bought 12,389 Solana. As of the result of this acquisition, the company now holds a total of 130,125.2 Solana with a value of approximately 32 million Canadian. At the same time, Soul Strategy sold 24.5 Bitcoin at an average price of $95,878.28 for proceeds of $2.3 million Canadian. The company currently holds 23.168 Bitcoin that has a value of $2.25 million. So they pretty much sold half of their Bitcoin position. Leah Wall, the CEO of Soul Strategy, commented, reallocating a portion of our BTC holding to Sol reflects Sol strategic Sol strategies strategic alignment with Solana's evolving value proposition with the centralized finance. While Bitcoin remains fun foundational to the digital asset landscape, we recognize Solana's growth trajectory and innovative capabilities as uniquely positioned to drive the next phase of blockchain infrastructure. So this company, Sol Strategy, has decided to focus mainly on Solana. So in the future, we could see further sales of Bitcoin to buy more Solana. So that is something new that we have now. But keep in mind that as the company buys more Solana, they're going to stay more Solana. If they actually get those validators, they will actually get more rewards also of Solana. And that recurrent income will become bigger, bigger and more important as we go along. This in combination with whatever price action we see in Solana, the underlying asset. Now let's go to the charts. This is one of the most liquid proxies that we have. We're trading in the millions of shares every single day. So that's pretty good. Like I told you guys, we should expect volatility with this asset. Solana is more volatile than Bitcoin. Therefore, the upsides and the corrections are going to be more important than Bitcoin. You need to expect the same thing from proxies. MicroStrategy is more volatile than Bitcoin and Bitcoin is already quite volatile. So we should expect the same thing with Soul Strategies here, which is a proxy of right now Bitcoin and Solana, but more and more will probably be only Solana. So with that said, we saw this huge run of the price from 24 cents up to a top of 220 even 233 we got the top and then we mean revert we got a correction so now we try to define where the different supports are initially maybe 160 was going to be the support and maybe even 180 180 didn't help two dollars didn't help 160 did not help and then we stopped a little bit here on the MA50 on the one hour chart for a while, but it did not work and then we corrected further and we stopped at $1.08, $1.09. So what does this mean? Well, it's either 110 the support or potentially also $1. That could be the case. So if you bought the stock at $2, then we're trading at $1.20 and we could actually get as low as one dollar that's why i indicated no not to chase the stock you have to wait at one point for more stable regions of the chart to see where you can enter so so far we got this huge wick here that stopped at 110 bounce then we touched it again and we went 
as 112 potentially here. Then we went as low as 109, bounce. Then we touched again here, 111 potentially, 112, bounce. And then we are correcting a little bit and we stopped at 122. So that's where we are right now. Here the MA50 now is above the price, so it's going to probably turn. MA200 here continues to go up. So the momentum is still up. There's no issue with that, but we have corrected quite a bit already. So could we correct a little more? Maybe we'll correct a little more because Bitcoin has corrected quite a bit over the weekend. Maybe that will affect it. But as soon as we see a big rebound from Bitcoin, we should see the stock react upwards. Not financial advice, that's my opinion. But is it better to get the stock near $1.10, $1.20 than at $2? Yes. At this state, yes. And you need to learn to see these pumps and drawdowns on this future stock because this will be repeated multiple times. It's going to happen again. Especially if the stocks eventually get to, I don't know, $5 or $10. I don't know how high it can go. But there's going to be explosive phases when we jumped a lot in price. But it could correct. 40, 50, 60, 70 percent after each pump and then stabilize, follow the different support level. That's key. I'm not kidding. And if we go below one dollar, then we need to actually see what's going on because that could be also a red flag here potentially. But you have to keep in mind that now here in the one hour chart, the ME200 is at 70 cents. So that could be the lowest price we could get for soul strategies. If we look at the daily chart, this is the daily chart. These are the levels that I showed you. You see the huge amount of volume that we have compared to what we had before. So you see here that actually the movement starts from 20 cents up to 235 and then we are at $1.20. Okay, so from 2 to 230, that's a $2.10 .10 move. If you divide that by 2, so $2.10 divided by one half, that's $1.05, which is here. Normally, stocks pump and at least and on average, they correct 50%. And that's what we see here. We are not exactly at 50%, but we are very close to 50%. So now, are we going to trade sideways and move up? That could be a healthy move. And what's even healthier is in the daily chart, we have ME50 at 47 cents and a half and the ME200 at 21 cents. So it's starting to move up. It's starting to show momentum. And this stock is, it means that it's just starting its movement. Is it a good opportunity at this stage? My guess is yes, but be aware of the support levels. I am still holding my position. I plan to keep it for a long term because I have a lot of condition on Solana. Unless something big happens with Bitcoin and it gets back to 50,000 or something, then this could all crumble and go down harder. We will track the charts. I'll make videos on it. The probabilities are that we are getting the last liquidations on the way down to get the massive pump to all-time highs and go beyond with Bitcoin, Solana will follow and proxies should follow. If they are proxies that are 100% Bitcoin, they will follow Bitcoin. If the case of Sol strategy is like 80% Solana, 20% Bitcoin, obviously Solana's influence will be stronger but at this stage because these proxies are starting to move right now the market is trying to establish what is the real value of these stocks and that's why we see these pumps but also the big corrections and then we will eventually follow the momentum of the underlying asset solana or bitcoin that's all i have today hope you enjoyed this video continue watching put your questions below i try to answer to every single question if i can follow both channels and if you want to know what the other channel is let me know and i'll post the link in the different videos see you all in the next one